morning, y'all. Um, of course, I'm driving to work. This is just my life. Um, I've recently been asked a couple times about why I don't agree with critical race theory and why I choose to speak out against it. Some people are like, you know, you're just, you know, like not in touch with the fact that you're black or um, just trying to cover up injustice with scripture and make injustice, you know, unimportant and things like that. And, you know, that's not true. I love being black. Let me just go ahead and put that out there right now. So in case anybody has any questions to my authenticity of my blackness, let me let you know straight out. There is nothing better in my world than the melanin that, that I get to wear every day, except for being a Christian. Um, and that's why I choose to speak out against critical race theory, because it brings divisiveness um, and division into the church. It's a divisive framework. In culture, how can I best say this um, most diplomatically? Paul says that, you know, we don't have any jurisdiction over culture. Culture is going to do what it wants to do. And so, you know, culture wants to hold on to things like critical race theory. That's what culture is going to do. Culture wants to divide itself and say that we are no better than oppressed and oppressors. And we will always participate in life this way, you know, based on the model of critical theory and that research. That's what culture has to say. What I choose to believe and what I believe is true is that we are more than that. We are more than oppressed and oppressors. That through the work of Christ on the cross, we are brothers and sisters if you are in Christ, if that is the framework that you choose to live your life from. And so in choosing to live your life from that place, no, you are not my oppressor if you're white and I am not oppressed just because I wear melanin. or a darker version of melanin because we all, you know, have melanin. So it's, to me, I speak out against critical race theory because people shouldn't be put down based on the color of their skin. People shouldn't have to feel shame based on the color of their skin. And before you think, well, black people and people of color have felt shame for the color of their skin for hundreds of years, that's not right. I can agree that people of color have been put down, have been Um, done dirty and all of these things for years based on the color of their skin and that's not right and we do not correct an evil with another evil so just because a white person or white people however you want to look at it have made laws or systems or um, had ways of thinking that may have kept people of color in a certain lane, that does not mean that the way that I correct that is by now shaming someone else for the color of their skin. Do not repay evil for evil. That is, that's the the conviction and the place that I come from when I speak out against critical race theory, because the goal of critical race theory is just to flip the the tide. It's to now oppress the oppressors. It's not just to give voice to the silenced, but it's to take the power away from those who they believe or those who have been deemed to be powerful. I don't know that that is the way of Christ and and the method or model that we see put forth in the New Testament, where two thirds of the Roman Empire were slaves. I don't see people picketing, you know, and, and leading up uprisings and revolts. What I do see is Paul sending a letter to Philemon saying, this is how you should treat Onesimus. Treat him like a brother. Any debt that he owes count, you know, toward me and I'll take care of that. And so when I look at things like critical race theory and the fallout from that, the conversations that I have with people who have been damaged by critical race theory and shamed by that for the color of their skin. When I talk to parents and they, they tell me about their children who have been shamed in school because of the color of their skin, because they're white, they're called stupid or, you know, just a dumb white male, Be- just because they're white, to me, that's wrong. 
And the same way I would speak out against that happening to a child of color or an adult of color is the same way I'm going to speak out against it happening to someone who's white because they are my brothers and sisters. That's that's the fact of the matter. That's the bottom line is that how we treat humans is what needs to be defended, not how we treat blacks and how we treat whites. How do we treat humanity? And so, yeah, there's a lot of things that we can speak into regarding justice or um, and that even goes down to how do, how are you defining justice, which is a whole other story. But yes, are, are there things that humanity could grow in where humanity could be more compassionate toward one another? Yes. And one of those areas is that as Christians, we need to be able to look at each other and say, first, you are my brother and sister, or my sister. First, before I am white, before I am black, I am a child of God. We stand at the foot of the cross on equal ground. There is no oppressed and oppressor at the foot of the cross. And until we can manage that in the church, I don't know that we really have a space to speak out into anything else. We need to sort ourselves out. We need to sort out our own hearts before we begin to look at oh this needs to be overturned and this needs to be you know uprooted how are we working within our own hearts to treat one another we can't look at culture that offers us things like critical race theory or critical theory and as we are supposed to be the city on the hill and call people up to to the light and lead away. We cannot send representatives down into culture, pick pieces of culture and bring that up into the church as if culture is gonna offer the remedy for the, the issues that we're currently facing. No, as Christians, we have the answer. And we need to be representatives. We need to be like going into culture and sharing that remedy with society, with culture and saying, we have a better way. We have a way for unity, not just reconciliation. We have a way for true unity to go forward. But instead, too often what I see is that we send representatives down into culture. They spy out the land and pick pieces of what they think could help the church. But what if it was the opposite? What if we sent people into culture with the answer, confident for the hope that they have, and they spread that hope into society. So no, y'all, I haven't um, turned in my blackness. I have not, um, you know, become confused. Am I woke? No. But I do believe that there is something greater than being woke. And that is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's it. That's my reason. Um, if, it, if you have any questions, go ahead and shoot them to me. But I, I do believe that Christianity offers a much better way to unity than critical race theory or critical theory. And that's it. Do I love being black? Yes. Yes. All day, every day. Do I love it more than being a Christian? No. My identity is first in Christ. And that's taken me a while to get to because, you know, like I said, I do love being black. Uh, But I've really had to wrestle through that and sit with that and be like, you know, what is my first priority? My first priority is as a Christian. And the same way that I would, if I saw somebody coming for somebody in my family, I'm going to raise up. Like, that's the same mindset that I have for my brothers and sisters in the body despite their color so that's it folks bye